I had the greatest job in the world, and that's working with dogs. Best in show winner is the French Bulldog. Winston won the National Dog Show. It was amazing, it was exciting. And to have a dog to be number one dog in this country, you have to have great nutrition. And I always fed Pro Plan, just like us. When we eat well, we feel good. And I just love that food and what it's done all these years to all the dogs I bred and all the dogs I've shown. Welcome to Pure Dog Talk. I am your host, Laura Reeves, and I am thrilled to welcome back one of our favorite guests, Bo Binkson is here to talk about his new book all about whippets the whippet an authoritative look at the breed's past present and future and i'm just i am overjoyed so welcome bo how are you doing today i'm doing pretty pretty, pretty good i'm not complaining at all um, excellent okay and this is your fourth edition of the quintessential The Whippet, right? That you first published in 1985. What made you want to update it again? What are readers going to find that's new for them? Well, I guess it's pretty unusual that um, a book that was published that long ago is reprinted. But um, there was lost published in a much a large edition in 2010. And so much has happened in the past 50 years. Uh, whippets have become uh, one of the most popular breeds at many shows. Crafts in England, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, they, they have 400 uh, dogs. Pretty, it's just pretty, amazing. Pretty I saw the whippet yeah. ring and I was... Whippet rings, two, two, for, yes. for, for one for dogs and one for bitches. Yes. Um, uh, the only labs and golds have more generally and... Uh, the list is this year for 400 for the past for for, for the past few years. Um, the um, I've, I've, I've been to shows with 250 300 dogs in Sweden or mm -hmm. or in, and in Germany they have a, a Saitan show which has 235 whippets as the the biggest entry. Um, then and uh, the, the whippet has also become amazingly popular in some countries where you wouldn't expect it necessarily expect it. Uh, the big shows in Poland, for instance, have all had a hundred exhibits now. And the 2024 World Show, which was in in Croatia last month, right. had 170, 171 whippets, which which is pretty amazing for for Croatia. But it's pretty pretty or part for the course in in the world show these days and there are over six thousand entries in in uh, the uh czech republic from from the czech republic alone on the internet whip it whip it archive wow uh, so that's probably the next the next big big whip it country i i, I suppose the uh, USA doesn't have the biggest registration figures, but the American Whippet Club holds a national specialty that in April every year, that's the largest in the world, sometimes more than 600 dogs right. and uh, over 1,200 entries. I made a point of including all countries that have affected the world population in some way in the book. And um, did you know that there is a world uh, class breeder, Whippet breeder in South Korea that often wins in Europe and works with American bloodlines? Wow. That's pretty amazing. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, I don't know what, what caused that young man to be fascinated by the way, but he is, and he is doing a great job. I read part of that 1985 book recently, and um, it's not a bad little book for its time, and a lot of content in later edition is in later editions also. Uh, but it's fairly typical of a read book books then, both in scope and size. Not many photos and uh, black and white, all black and white. But I always remember how proud I was when I when I went to, to into Foyle's bookstore on Cherry and Cross Road in London and see my book on the shelf there. I was a published published author, you know. And there was there was there was this was the 1980s, of course. To get back to the new book, I'm so grateful that Denise Flame convinced me to update it. The book is available both on Amazon and via Denise's Rebadana Publishing dot com. They did a, a great job. Um, of publishing it, of, of updating it. The book is much bigger than I expected. I don't know why Why I didn't expect that because I know that we added a lot of text on about 200 photos of winners from the last 15 years. Anyway, it weighs about three and a half 
the 300 quarter, 300 quarter pound, I think, oh, and covers 530 pages. And when I took it at the last corporate and national special aid in Tennessee in April, the one reader actually started to cry because it was so beautiful. It was very, very, very cool. That is amazing, Bo. Yeah. That is okay. absolutely, absolutely amazing. Okay. And so share with our listeners some of the, I mean, to me, fascinating breed history that you've gathered over the years about whippets specifically. It started sort of humble beginnings hunting hares and continued on to be incredibly popular as the poor man's greyhound, right? In, in racing circles and to today where it's an, an as you say, immensely popular companion pet, uh, show dog, etc., all around the world. Well, of course, the whippet was uh, become popular and known as the favorite dog of the poor mining families mm -hmm. in the north of England in, in, in the late 1800s. Mm -hmm. um, there was organized raising with considerable sums to the winners. So, of course, the whippets were, the dogs were really well taken care of and mine. In fact, fed much better than the, the people. Mm -hmm. uh, what's really amazing is how many people turn out to watch the races. There are some grainy black and white films still in, 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 in existence and uh, uh, from the late 1800s and they prove beyond a doubt that there were thousands of spectators of that races, many thousands. Wow. Uh, but I, what I found out is that the Whippet had friends much higher up on the social ladder as well. Gertrude, the lady, lady Dishes, was socially very prominent and owned, owned several champion whippets, including the first two Brindle uh, whippet champions. Uh, she showed the dog herself. She was primarily a cat fancier, but she showed the dogs herself uh, in post-Victorian voluminous shirts and skirts and cartwheel hat. Wow. And uh, there was also Sir, Sir Edwin Chator Bart, who was a frequent visit exhibitor of Lady Chator, and help reorganize the Whippet um, Club after the First World War. There was even some royal connections, if that's what you're looking for. In Kitty Kelly's biography of, of the British royal family, there is a previously unknown photo of Queen Mary with three of her sons, dating from perhaps to 1910, mm -hmm. uh, which has a very good looking Whippet in it. Wow. Uh, I've not been able to find out the name of the dog, but Queen Maud of Norway, who was born in England, and a granddaughter of Queen Victoria was often photographed with, with uh, her whippets. Uh, so I think that whippet has probably, the whippet has probably gotten a, a somewhat unfair rap uh, for appealing only to one particular segment of society, while in fact it was appealing both to high and low. Mm. Okay? Mm. I love it. Um, so one of the most fascinating things, I think, about the whippet that perhaps you can speak to that I think addresses maybe the quality is the just absolute co cooperation among breeders. And it's, I think, and you tell me would indicate that's where the depth of quality is coming from just internationally, globally. Well, there are differences between the standards in a UK and the U S but they're not greater than that. What that than that? A really good dog can win in both countries. Mm. And um, the days when you almost need an English champion to win in the U.S. was long, long, long since gone. And the English had something American blood since then, which was quite successful. But mostly the import from continental Europe these days. And Europe is full of fantastic whippets, uh, part English and part American breeding these days. Uh, the Europeans are almost more American than we are in the U.S., and they love American imports. I must give a shout out to Italy, which has some wonderful whippets and probably five or six world-class breeders alone, and Holland, which has a long, has a long history in the breed, and currently houses Europe's probably most successful stud dog, who was born in uh, South Africa of all countries. Oh my gosh! Uh, yeah, oh, part, part British and part American background. The most successful British in England actually lives in Holland these days. These days. Hmm. Wow, okay. that's amazing. Um, so when you talk about that depth and breadth of quality, can you identify other factors? Because other breeds just don't have it. 
right? They just don't have the depth and breadth of quality internationally that Whippets seem to. So what else is affecting that? Well, I mentioned the Internet's Whippets breed archive earlier. It has more than 372,500 pedigrees. I just checked. Many of them illustrated. Wow. wow. It's from, from all over the world. It's an incredibly important tool for both novices and long, long, long time fanciers like me, and everybody uses it. You can find statistics, both current and from the past, about things like population, color distribution, health, and the most popular sires. And you can even mock up, make up mock pedigrees for plant litters. Mm. That's pretty most breeds have some sort of uh, internet pe pedigrees, but I don't think they're, they're as much used as, as the Whippet thing. I really think the success of the Whippet breed archive has been the success of the whole breed worldwide. And there are many comp different, also many different com competitive outlets for Whippets, which probably accounts for, for much of the activity in the breed and explains why we lose so, so few fanciers. Mm -hmm. um, so a few new fanciers. Uh, you can focus on confirmation, of course, but there are also field uh, activities that you can particip participate in, racing and coursing. And we always have a couple of days of field activities during our national special day. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there are so the, the, the same dogs who participate. There are 200, and, there were 200 entries in the coursing alone at the 2000, 2024 national and 50 of them are confirmation champions. Wow. I checked that. And That's at the impressive. national special, there are invariably special classes for those who are racing, horsing, and qualified, and a special award to the winner of best performance dog. Uh, then you can, of course, participate in obedience and rally, like hundreds did at our, national, national, our last national special. And there are always well fit classes of versatility and triathlon classes. Troop Canyon is revolutionizing medical insurance for pets by providing the best possible experience to our members. And it's not some space age dream, it's happening now. We pay your veterinarian directly while you're checking out and we're the only ones who can, which means you have decisions in seconds and you don't have to wait for reimbursement. So unlike with other providers, you'll keep more money in your pocket. Ask your veterinarian if Troop Canyon can pay them directly because there's pet insurance and then there's Troop Canyon. The okay. triathlon, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, Bo, but I do want to really poke at that because I see it in a variety of hound breeds, sight hound breeds particularly. And I just think it's so important how much emphasis these breeds are putting on not just the dual dog, but that all around dog. You know, well, uh, hounds do it, Ridgebacks do it, Whippets do it, all kinds of different breeds. And I love it. I, I'm so surprised that not more more breeds do do it. Actually, it, it's it's very mm -hmm. popular, and and there is always a, an award for the highest in versatility, the best versatility dog, and they take well, confirmation, uh, racing, and uh, coursing, and versus versus versatility in 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 in, in, in uh, uh, rally and obedience, right? right? Thank, thank, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this talks a little bit about what the Whippet breeders are doing that everybody else in the purebred dog fancy could learn from, but what else would you point to? How are they getting these pedigrees right? How are they getting these dogs so consistently right? The fact that we have a really great national specialty is, I think, very important. Um, I think the Whippet people more than, more or less take over a hotel and motel in a different part of the country in April every year. And um, beyond national specialty judging, there is so much going on that there is no way you can participate in everything. There is racing and coursing, breeder sweepstakes, veteran sweepstakes, futurity, top 20, health testing, judges education, parade of honors, parade of rescues, and probably even more that I've forgotten, like obedience um, and uh, agility and, and, and rally. To give it gives people something to focus on. I'm really sorry for breeds that don't have a great national specialty, right. uh, and it probably helps that we are the group. Grew as a group are generally very nice. That I don't know that there are some exceptions, of course. But when I hear what goes on in some other breeds, I'm so grateful. I'm mean, when the whippets is that. Right. I doubt that anybody would refuse to let a stud dog be used on some bitches because he just happened to be owned by the wrong people, or if somebody somebody would love 
And if somebody would like to, to buy a promising new puppy from another kennel, just let them. Mm. There's the usual grumbling about the wrong winners, of course, but I bet there's less rancor and big bad feelings in whippets than in most breeds. We really try to be happy for each other when somebody's winning, and even if it isn't what we would have done if we were judging. You know, Bo, that's actually so profound um, that the breeds that are thriving have positive, inclusive national club membership, I think is so amazing. I just, I just really want to emphasize that. Y'all be nice. Your breed will be better. Just saying. That's, <laughs> I just, I, I think that's so on point, Bo. I just don't understand the people over there. It, 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 it's much nicer for yourself too, if you're yes. over there. Yes. So it's, it's not, it's not Pollyanna. I, I, I hate to hate that kind of uh, attitude, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's much nicer all the way through. I'm, yeah. I'm, there's no reason to be un unpleasant. I don't think. I love it. I love it. So can you, let's talk about some sort of quintessential, really iconic lines or families or kennels or however you want to talk about it in Whippets, either that stand alone or that work together that have really, really influenced the modern breed. So if you go to the Whippet National, what are the three kennels names that are going to show up the most often in your top winners well we've got to be good a little little back a little further back than that unfortunately uh, all the way to english laguna when when they were really laguna kennels mm. which mm. were the santa son of, of the great star of laguna ligonier was sent over to the u.s in the 60s long time ago mm. rainbow barn dance and he basically he basically created the American way, but single-handedly. Wow. He, wow. He, he was an incredibly strong sire for his own elegant type, and his little brother was exported to Canada. But between them, the two of them pr produced, a, they, were, they were saved from, their, their offspring were, was, was sheer beauty of the, these dogs were of offspring, whereas over, overwhelming. They were saved from over refinement by the strength of Stone and Meadows, more generally American line, bred by Mrs. Ware, Doris Ware, the late to Doris Ware. Mm -hmm. And of course, there was Peggy Newcomb and a quarter fleet for Pennyworth, who did wonderful PR for the breed by winning Best in Show at Westminster and being number one in all breeds. Later, there was Champ de la Creme de la, Creme de la Renta, who was a terrific sire, and his grandson, Champion Starline Raynon, mm -hmm. uh, who both have sired well over 100 champions each. And Raynon is in the news again now for having sired many more champions than in a couple of litters by AI, AI artificial insemination. We're lucky to have so many, many clever breeders in pretty much all areas of the country, which makes it difficult to win with mediocrity of ever, anywhere. Sporting Fields had bred had brand, brand many leaders, um, often in partnership with other, other breeders, but they have the number of champions for it. And six Sporting Fields dogs have won the National Special League, or seven if you count Bo Betts, Air Force One, who won in 23 and 23. He was officially co bred by the late Kelly Carol Harris with Debbie Butt and her daughter, Amanda Jaffs. Mm -hmm. There are so many other kennels and stud dogs that have had breed changing influence, like Starland and Chelsea and Plum Creek and Saxon Shore, that it's impossible to mention them all. Okay? You know, Bo, I think that that, again, it speaks to, I mean, we what we're trying to do here is take what Whippets are doing right and help people apply it to other breeds, right? So the mm -hmm. idea that you can't win with mediocre dogs is beautiful. Like that's another really important salient point for breeds to understand when you've got quality, it begets quality and all rising tide raises all boats. That concept. I love that. Absolutely well, love that. I'm glad you do, but, but it's basically, basically true in Whippets, I think, mm. I think, mm. and maybe I'm painting it too rosy picture, but I, I think, I don't think so. I think it is pretty, pretty interesting. Well, you know, you've judged all over the world. You judged for decades. So here's your here's your memory test. <laughs> okay, you ready? Name three dogs that you've seen that you absolutely admired and what specifically made them stand out in your mind? Well, let me tell you that that's very difficult. Um, I thought of that a lot. And some of the dogs I've put up in Europe and Australia have been wonderful. But the best whippet I've judged remains 
Champion Brushwood's Moxie of Endeavor, the Champion Brushwood's Moxie of Endeavor. In the US, uh, who has a perfect elegant, elegance and balance of, of elegance and, and uh, strength, she would have, well, she should have won many more best in show than she did, um, but she won the national specialty three times one, once on the B. And um, uh, I um, haven't judged the craft's best in show winner, Penklo Dutch Gold, who was wonderful and whom I got the opportunity to go over. When he was shown not for competition, when I judged his specialty in Scotland, the same time he, the same year he won, he won crafts. He was so much more excited than his pictures. Really, really wonderful. Nor have I judged uh, champ, grand champion Pinnacle Kentucky Bourbon, just admired her from ringside. I can still remember how enthusiastic some British judges, whom I really respect, were about, about Bourbon when they had put her up at specialties before she was famous and had won more than 100 best in show at all big shows. Um, by favorites, uh, you you also asked about yes, some yours. Bread, right? <laughs> Follow right. with it. Well, they, I haven't bred a lot, but I must mention a dog I bred in Sweden long ago, international champion Bohem Momrath. Momrath, he was uh, Alice in Wonderland leader. Both of the dogs I bred then, we bred then, uh, don't hold up today, but here it does. Such a pity that I had nothing left of him. He was hardly used at all, at stud at all, and was owned by a teenage girl that was not easy to, to deal with and kept him way too fat. But she was she redeemed herself by a lady telling me how much she loved him and, and when I when I moved to the US and that was that was okay. And then I la then later on I bred um, uh, Bohem Silavi. Yes. Who, was, um, who had a short but brilliant career shown by my partner, Paul Epiani, who is an excellent handler. He won both Old Breed and especially Best in Show with her, but she remains famous mostly because she was lost at JFK Airport in early 2000s, and thousands of people spent months trying to, trying to find her until the New York Times declared her to be an urban legend. Hmm. Uh, she was never found, but fortunately, I had bred her young and through her son, she's behind everything that came later. Okay. Well, that one, that one still breaks my heart. So, and yours, I know. So, you know, talk a little bit, you've got some other books just in closing. Give us, give us a, a recap, um, your best in show book. That's another, <laughs> use it as a, as a paperweight phenomenal book. What else? Talk to us about your other books. Well, I wrote my first dog book when I was 22 years old. Oh my so gosh. That, that, that's uh, quite a while ago, 50, 58 years to be exact. And there have, of course, been a few books since then. I wrote a breed encyclopedia that I didn't, wasn't very happy with. Uh, and I sold the rights to it back to the publisher for not very much money, whereupon it was published in lots of languages and sold half a million copies. So that would have been, you make many mistakes, that would have been nice, some nice royalties for me. But of course, mm. I got nothing. And in fact, so only saw both the book once after that in a bookstore window when I was judging in Brazil. Oh my God. Uh, but I did write one one of the book that was good. You mentioned it. I think it was called Best in Show, The World of Show Dogs and Dog Shows and was published in 2008. So it's not exactly current. I worked on it for at least a couple of years and uh, tried to make it world encompassing or possible and historically correct as possible. It has all the biggest winners of all the different breeds in the world in it and photos of most of them. Dog shows had an early beginning in the 18th century and descend on the one hand from shooting and hunting people and on the other hand from the rat catchers in the pubs of London. Eventually these were considered as offensive and gave rise to more humane, in, in, humane activities including clubs for fancy dogs. But that book was never promoted as it should have been. It got wonderful reviews and won some awards, but I think the people who had worked on it were with, with me were all fired so, so nobody was left of the publisher who knew what it was about. I think it's still available on Amazon for about 20 bucks or something like that. Oh my gosh. If I will tell you guys, I, I was, I am lucky enough to own a copy of that. If you can find it on Amazon for 20 bucks, buy it. It is, it is unbelievably beautiful. So well, I, I had a lot of, lot of fun doing it and, and it was really hardworking and nobody knew what, what it was supposed to be and uh, i don't think anyone has published anything similar no, no nothing it is absolutely unique and you know the other thing that people may not realize you have your 
um, social media. And your, your question was, why do you focus so much on the past? But I don't think that's quite it. I love the emphasis. It's Bo Bingston's show dogs of the past. Isn't that the, the actual Facebook? Yeah. It would be true to being show dogs of the past. It says, it says great show dogs of the past, but then they're not always great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I mean, it's so amazing to see these photos. So why, what, what makes you want to bring those to the, to the present? Uh, well, because it's just so fascinating for us, you know, I, I didn't think so when I was younger and almost no younger person thinks so. So perhaps maybe you have to be in some sort of kind of a hardy historical artifact yourself to appreciate history. I don't know. Uh, you can never know exactly what went on as recently as, for instance, 100 years ago, because uh, even though people have changed, haven't changed that much, in some respects, people were different then, but but you can read their many reports and guess what was meant with them. With them. I'm sure that many contemporary dog fans who think that my fascination with the past past is at least a little weird. <laughs> Nobody can force you for the future, but that Churchill or someone said, if you want to know the future, it helps to know the past. Hundred percent, and I, I treasure those. I treasure those. That is, and I know a lot of other people do as well. So, Bo, thank you so very much. I really appreciate your time. I know you've been having having a rough couple days recently, so I'm super glad to see you, and and it's awesome. Well, it, it is nice to be back. I don't think I'll be going to do very many dog shows, but it, it, it's, it's yeah, def, def, definitely, and, and I'm enjoying it very much still. Very good. Very thank, good. Thank you. Thank you.